Hey everybody, welcome back to another reaction video. Hope you're doing well. My name is Todd. This is Queen Rhaenyra. Maybe I said that right. Targaryen from the House of the Dragon. This is kind of the backstory explained. This is requested by a Patreon subscriber. You two can join the Patreon link down below in the description. We'll get you there. Go we'll like and video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when videos post immediately. And you can come check them out. And let's go. I've never read the books, so uh, this is going to be all new information to me, and I haven't seen the show, so. Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you a long night. This video is sponsored by Audible. So everyone is excited because House of the Dragon is coming. Casting news has been coming out. We it got is come the first and gone. official teaser first for season. HBO. And we've got news coming out that HBO is expanding the Westerosi universe and working on more than just House of the Dragon. But I'm back with my House of the Dragon series and the one you have all been waiting for, requesting, and asking me over and over and over and over and over and over, and over, and over, over Rhaenyra Targaryen. So let me know in the comments below who you want me to do next. I have a lot of content coming. Mama is focused. So in 97 <laughs> AC, Ama Aaron gave birth to King Viserys Targaryen's daughter, Rhaenyra Targaryen, also known as the Realm's Delight. Rhaenyra's mother, Ama Aaron, was the daughter of King Jaehaerys and Queen Alicent's daughter, Princess Dela, who was married to the Lord of the Vale, Roderick Aaron. Ama's mother, Dela, died birthing her, and Ama was wed to her awesome. cousin, Prince Viserys. Ama would also have issues with pregnancy and carrying a child. She had multiple pregnancies that resulted in miscarriages. She gave birth to a son that died. But in 97 AC, she had a beautiful daughter, Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen, and Rhaenyra was the light of her parents' lives, the apple of their eyes. They adored her and doted on her without apology. Rhaenyra was only six years old when her father became King of the Andals, Ronar, and the First Men, protector of the realm. The histories tell us that Viserys was a well-loved king. The lords loved the young king, as did the small folk. He was open-handed and the Red Keep became a place of song and splendor. King Viserys and Queen Aima hosted many feasts and tourneys and gave gold titles and offices to their favorites. But at the center of the merriment, cherished and adored by all, was their only surviving child, Princess Rhaenyra. The court singers dubbed her the Realm's Delight. That's beautiful artwork. She was a precious child, bright, bold, and beautiful, as only one of Blood of the Dragon can be. At just seven years old, she became a dragon rider. She took to the sky a young dragon named Cyrax. At eight, she was made cupbearer for her father, and King Viserys was almost never seen without Rhaenyra by his side. One of the biggest plot points of the Dance of Dragons is simply secession. Who by rights should sit the Iron Throne? And when you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. So technically, due to the Indeed. findings in the Great Council <laughs> of 101, Daemon Targaryen should succeed his brother. But Sir Otto Hightower was like, over my dead body, bitch. Viserys never <laughs> named Damon his heir. But do not be confused. Viserys loved his brother, and Rhaenyra loved her uncle. Whenever Damon would return to King's Landing from his many travels, he would bring his niece exotic gifts. Sir Otto Hightower hated Damon, and I discussed this at length in the Damon video that will be linked in the description box. So I'm not gonna talk about it again here, but it was Sir Otto's wish that Rhaenyra be made Viserys' heir despite Daemon. Daemon would be a second Magor the Cruel or worse, better the realm's delight than Lord Fleabottom. But Viserys was adamant that he would have sons. He Lord was young, a son can still be born to me, he would say, but he hated dissension. He was a peacemaker, a pushover even. In 105 AC, Queen Ama Aaron was pregnant again, and Sir Christian Cole was appointed to the King's Guard. Woo! 105 AC <laughs> was a dramatic year, like in hindsight. 
Ooh, that was putting some of the pieces of that puzzle together. Sir Christian Cole is a big part of Rhaenyra's story and also a big ally of the Greens, but it was not always this way. I'm actually really looking forward to who is gonna play Christian Cole. I saw like a leaked casting tape and I'll link that below as well. So to me, Christian Cole is a very interesting villain. At 23 years old, Christian Cole joined the Kingsguard. He was Dornish and he was hot. He even beat Prince Damon in a sword fight and unhorsed him in tourney. So Rhaenyra was only seven at this time, but she was enamored with Christian Cole. He had pale green eyes and coal black hair. The ladies loved him, but Rhaenyra loved him most, dubbing him my white knight. Rhaenyra actually begged her father to name Sir Christian Cole her own personal shield and protector and Varys obliged. There wasn't much, if anything, that he ever said no to Rhaenyra about. So Christian Cole became a permanent fixture at Rhaenyra's side and always wore her favor in tourneys. But it was in this same year that Breakbones came to King's Landing as well. And we shall talk about Breakbones in a second because that's Rhaenyra's baby daddy. So the year 105 AC ended very sadly. Rhaenyra's mother, Queen Ama, died whilst giving birth to wow. her son, Balon, and then Balon died the next day. So after a period of mourning, Viserys disregarded the Great Council's findings and named his daughter Rhaenyra Targaryen his rightful heir and princess of Dragonstone. Viserys had a lavish ceremony at King's Landing. Hundreds of lords from all over the realm came and swore fealty to Rhaenyra. They swore to honor and defend her right of secession. So this happened because of the urging of Sir Otto Hightower. And it would be Sir Otto Hightower who would want to overthrow all of this once Viserys died. So in 106, Viserys would marry again. Yeah, you want to get him on the record before the actual death in secession. Otherwise, it's just going to turn into mayhem. <laughs> the Queen Allison. At the feast, Rhaenyra poured for her stepmother, and Queen Alicent kissed her and called her daughter. Rhaenyra even helped take Queen Alicent's clothes off for the bedding ceremony. They say love and laughter ruled King's Landing, tourneys, feasts, and balls. But in 107 AC, Queen Alicent gave birth to a healthy baby boy. Pretty happy the uh, bedding ceremony is no longer... No longer uh, decent. <laughs> boy named Aegon. And two years later, she had a daughter, Helena, and then a son, Aemon. But it was Rhaenyra who continued to sit at the foot of the Iron Throne with her father as he counseled her on how to rule. It was Rhaenyra he brought with him to all of his meetings of the small council. And nothing anyone said would change that. He was set on his daughter succeeding him he didn't give a fuck how many sons he had it was said that many a lord and knight had eyes for Rhaenyra but she oh, yeah. only had eyes for Sir Christian Cole her personal guard and constant companion Rhaenyra and Alicent their enmity their motherly daughter shit it did not last. They were in constant competition to be the first lady of the realm. Alicent was also bitter, bitter that she had given the king two sons, and yet he still names his daughter his heir. Rhaenyra and Alicent hated each other. In 111 AC, at the five-year marriage anniversary feast tourney, at the opening feast, Rhaenyra dressed dramatically in the red and black colors of House Targaryen, while Queen Alicent wore a green gown. So people started to take note of this. They took note of the wardrobe and Rhaenyra's supporters became the Blacks and Alicent's supporters became the Greens. So Rhaenyra's white knight unhorsed all of Queen Alicent's men in the tourney and Prince Daemon had arrived from across the narrow sea and there cheering the loudest was his niece Rhaenyra. And this is where the rumors start about Princess Rhaenyra and Daemon. Eustace claims that Daemon and Princess Rhaenyra were caught abed together by Sir Arik Cargyle. And it was this that made Viserys exile his brother from court. Mushroom tells a different tale, however, that Rhaenyra had eyes only for Sir Christian Cole, 
but the knight had declined her overtures. It was then that her uncle offered to school her in the arts of love so that she might move the virtuous Sir Christian Cole to break his vows. So basically the rumor is that Damon taught her how to suck dick, tongue kiss, all of the above. But when she finally <laughs> thought herself ready to approach him, the knight who Mushroom That's swears funny. was a chaste and virtuous as the age septon reacted in horror and disgust. So Viserys soon heard of it and whatever version of the tale was true, Damon asked for Rhaenyra's hand and Viserys basically was like, get the fuck out, don't come back. And Damon departed and went back to the Stepstones to continue his war with the Triarchy. So we don't know what really happened. I actually do not believe Mushroom's versions of events. Like everything we know about Christian Cole that is fact is that he doesn't give a fuck about his vows and he betrayed his king. He betrayed, he betrayed Viserys. But maybe, just maybe, Christian Cole is a Jamie Lannister figure where we think he's bad because we don't have his POV. And hopefully we get that in House of the Dragon. But I honestly believe that Christian Cole was in love with Rhaenyra and all of this shit is rumors and gossip until they show us the real tea on screen. So after the Daemon debacle, peace was restored to the realm. But in 113 AC, at the age of 16, Rhaenyra officially took possession of Dragonstone and she got married. So the heir to the Iron Throne will be named Prince or Princess of Dragonstone. That's how you know they're the heir to the Iron Throne. So Rhaenyra's husband would be the son of none other than the sea snake, Corlys Valerion, and Rhaenys Targaryen, Laenor Valerion. So Rhaenyra didn't want this because it was a known fact that Laenor was gay and had no interest in women. So Rhaenyra told her father <laughs> flat out, my half brothers would be That's more his not taste. Help. She begged and cried and pleaded, but on this, Viserys would not be moved. And really he couldn't if he wanted to, because if he had scorned the Valerians again, he would have lost them forever. And instead of giving up her crown, she married Laenor. But the night before the wedding comes another conflicting tale or another part of the first conflicting tale. So when it comes to break bones and Christian Cole, and that's why House of the Dragon is going to be so interesting because we think we know the story right we know the broad strokes but we don't know the truth we don't know the actual story we know we don't know like we have conflicting accounts where probably neither account is true or half of one is true and half of the other is true it's so conflicting so one version is that Rhaenyra ran into Christian Cole and was like take my virginity my husband won't give a fuck about it anyway it means nothing to him so supposedly it went one of two ways Sir Christian Cole was like, let's run away together. I love you. And Rainera was like, excuse me. I know you're <laughs> tripping. I'm going to be the queen. I'm not running away with you to be no sellsword's wife. The other version is that he was like, I am a knight of the King's Guard. This is disgusting. I will not break my vows for you. And Rhaenyra was so distraught that she ran away crying and she bumped into Sir Harwin Strong, break bones, and he gave her the dick. Either way, something went down that we don't know and we don't know exactly what. Like, we don't know exactly what happened. But we do Who's know dick and that where? they hated each other. Sir Christian Cole <laughs> and Rhaenyra hated each other from that night on out. He was once her best friend, but now he was an enemy and Breakbones took Sir Christian Cole's place as Rhaenyra's pet. So Rhaenyra went to Driftmark for her wedding on Corlys Valerian's ship, the Sea Snake, where Christian Cole used to be her champion and companion, personal shield. It was now Sir Harwin Strong. The wedding was extravagant, a feast and tourney for days. And Christian Cole beat the shit out of everybody there. Like he broke Break Bones' collarbone and basically killed Sir Laenor's lover, Sir Joffrey Lonmouth. And honey, Queen Allison loved every minute of it because she's petty like that. Everybody that knew Alex and, ev and everybody knew that Allison and Rhaenyra hated each other. Like they were gossiping. About I mean, you got to show out. You got to prove a point and be like, I'm going to kick everybody's ass here. About this shit all the way in Essos. <laughs> like they were gossiping about this shit across awesome. the narrow sea. 
So Rhaenyra would go on to have three children by Lenor, and I'm saying air quotes when I say by Lenor because these children were definitely thought to be bastards, and they were definitely thought to be the bastards of Sir Harwin Strong, aka Breakbones. She had Jacaris, Lucaris, and Joffrey. Joffrey was named after her husband Lenor's lover that died at the wedding tourney. The kids of Alicent and the kids of Rhaenyra hated each other. Alicent and her kids constantly mocked them and accused them of being bastards. In the meantime, Damon's first wife died and he married Lenor's sister, Lena. And Lena and Rhaenyra became besties. So Damon and Lena would visit Dragonstone often to see Rhaenyra. They would all fly on their dragons together. They were good friends, maybe even more than friends. So Damon and Lena had twin daughters and Rhaenyra betrothed her two oldest sons to Damon and Lena's daughters. So Lena got pregnant again and died in childbirth. Rhaenyra was by Damon's side during it all. And not long after is when Lenor died. So the deaths of Lena and Lenor, Jesus. Rhaenyra and Damon getting married. It's like, was it murder? Was Lena murdered? We know that Lenor was murdered, but was it murder for hire? Poison was like, pretty there are uh, so many murder abundant back then. In Fire and Blood in House of the Dragon. Like I could do a whole series on just the murder. I can't remember who got poisoned at Game of Thrones. Yeah, I can't remember who did. It's been so long since I've seen that show at this point. <laughs> murder mysteries that happened leading up to the dance and during but yeah, the yeah people getting poisoned. so let me know if that's something that you would like to see so in 120 ac damon got rhaenyra pregnant and princess rhaenyra finally had a child that looked like a targaryen and the greens could stop mocking her now so they named him aegon allison was like how dare she name her son aegon my son's name is aegon it is a slight to my son and like, I feel like that's kind of petty because there's so many Aegons in the Targaryen yeah, it's family, like naming but somebody whatever. John. But Mushroom said, yeah, yeah, true, true that, true that. Yes, it was a slight because Rhaenyra was queen petty, like for real. And then came the Dance of Dragons, the civil war that would burn through the seven kingdoms of Westeros. So Queen Allison hid the death of King Viserys so that she could plot against Rhaenyra, the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. She had the upper hand at first, while Rhaenyra was on Dragonstone giving birth to her only daughter, Visenya, who was born twisted and malformed, her father's body was rotting as the Greens plotted to steal her throne. Damn. And Rhaenyra would make them pay with fire and blood. So I'm not going to go into the events Classic of the Game actual of Dance of Dragons. Game of Thrones fashion. I've talked about them in all of the <laughs> other videos. Rhaenyra was at the forefront of the Blacks of House Targaryen. Rhaenyra and Daemon. Daemon was doing the shit. The events of the dance would make these videos a thousand years long. But Rhaenyra used her sons, her dragons, her name, and most of all, her husband to win the Iron Throne, even if she didn't hold it long. And I know there will be people that won't like like Rhaenyra. I know she might not be liked because she is a woman that's fighting for her rights against men at any cost, but Rhaenyra is full of compassion. There's a lot of Danny in Rhaenyra. Uh, Rhaenyra was a motherless child whom Alicent could have nurtured, but she chose not to and saw Rhaenyra only as a threat, only as competition. Yet, when Rhaenyra had both Alicent and her daughter as captives, she didn't kill them. She didn't harm them. But switch the roles. If Alicent had Rhaenyra captive, Rhaenyra would have been executed immediately. And that's the real tea. I love Rhaenyra and I'm going to ride for Rhaenyra hard when House of the Dragon comes out. <laughs> Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. Excellent. If you like this video, video please give it a thumbs link up. Link down below in the description for the original. Go throw it some love. And I got to say, the narrator and creator of that video nailed it with the tone and the language and everything. It made it very interesting, very cool. Obviously, I'm not well-versed in either the books or anything outside of eight seasons of Game of Thrones. And even in eight seasons of Game of Thrones, I was watching, like, I was watching YouTube videos of discussing the episodes, a little bit of backstory to it. 
context, who was doing what, who was doing where, kind of helped me along. It wasn't hard to follow at the beginning part. It was definitely hard to figure out who the hell are we talking about here? Because the names are all wildly hard to remember. The names of the people, the names of the places. I mean, it was a nightmare. But uh, those shows where we helped, I looked up like articles and stuff, news articles, summaries, etc. That really did help kind of add some depth to what I was watching. Instead of just surface level where you're just along for the ride, I kind of tried to at least be able to kind of follow along on a deeper level. That being said, it's been some years since I saw the earlier seasons of Game of Thrones, and I think I've forgotten most of it, honestly. Um, I would love to see The Red Wedding again. I thought that was such a brilliant episode. Nobody saw it coming. It was just, well, if you haven't read the books, you didn't see it coming. But those of us who had never heard of it or seen of it before the first episode of the first season, floored. <laughs> <laughs> no idea that was coming. It was wildly one of those moments where you're just like, what's happening? Who's dying? What? It Are they going to die, die? Let me know your thoughts in the comments on the first season of House of Dragon. How do you think the second season's going to go? Do you think it's going to be better? Uh, do you think the first season of House of Dragon is better than the first season of Game of Thrones? That's what I'm interested in. I want to know if it's better and worth the time to put into it. Very rarely can you call a video fun and informative, but that was fun and informative. Thanks so much for watching along. I appreciate it. Link down below in the description for the Patreon. Thanks so much for subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.